The church, from its very beginning, even ancient Israel, from its very beginning, all people all over the planet, from their very beginning, have been storytellers. Every indigenous person on the planet grew up with the awareness that there are two realities. The reality of the world in which we live and the reality of the story world in which we also live. And all of us have stories. And I'd like to share with you a little bit of my story from the recent past. Now, each one of you could think of a story like this. It's a story about suffering. It's a story about my mom who had a stroke about one year ago, a stroke which totally paralyzed her. She's been laying in a hospital bed for a year. She's been laying unable to move, unable to take care of herself. And that is hard for mom, because mom was somebody who not only took care of herself, but took care of everybody that she knew and loved. My brothers and sisters and I have been gathering around mom's bed for a year. We get to meet each other there. We get to talk to each other. We're learning more about each other. We're a big family, and we don't always have awareness of what is going on in everybody's life. But mother's passing has helped us grow closer. But there's something else that I'd like to bring to your attention about what is happening in mother's bed. Because we've been watching her body, and her body appears to be about this far away from passing over, from dying. But her spirit is in the bed too. And mother's spirit has been strong throughout her whole life. My mom, as a young woman in Holland, worked for a Jewish physician during the Second World War. And from time to time, there'd be a knock on the door, and there'd be Nazi soldiers with rifles, and they were looking for Jewish people. And Mom would answer the door, and she'd say, Oh, I'm sorry, I've just washed the floor. I can't let you in right now. But if you come back a little bit. And what she was doing was stalling the German soldiers so that the rabbi, the doctor, could hide Jewish refugees quickly. Mom was a lady who lived in the spirit. And now as we watch her on her deathbed, because she's not going to get up unless a miracle happens, on her deathbed, we have been blessed by her spirit. Mother has had us smiling. She's had us laughing. She's had us amazed at the goodness that continues to bubble up through her broken body. There are two realities in mother's bed, the reality of her dying body and the reality of her living and life-giving spirit. And each one of you can think of examples like that. But what I'd like to bring to your attention is that we all live in a conflict between the spiritual world and the material world. And in our time, that conflict is intensifying because we seem to be drifting to this material side and we seem to be abandoning the spiritual side. The texts that we read today were texts about a person by the name of Jesus. And Jesus made such a powerful difference in the lives of so many people. And one of the texts speaks about a group of women who after Jesus had been crucified and laid in the grave, a group of women who go to care for his body, to anoint it, to wrap it in linen, so that it can be regarded with respect and dignity. These women are no doubt deeply sad as they make their way to the grave. And then, a surprise, something they would never have expected, there by the grave, two angels in bright shining garments. And the angels ask the question, who are you looking for in this grave? And they said, we're looking for Jesus, 
And the angel said, Jesus is not here. Jesus has been risen. Jesus is alive. Now that news came to those women as good news. And they immediately went back to the men who were the disciples. And there's an interesting little comment there. The men said, these women are just making this up. And up to that time in the world, the world was governed by what is called a patriarchy. It was governed by men. And what the story allows us to see is that women, too, have a very important part to play in revealing the love of God. Now, Peter finally takes the women at their word, and he rushes to the grave to look, because Peter has been so very close to Jesus. And he's wondering, is it possible that what Jesus has been teaching us is true? And when he gets there, he discovers that it is true. Now, we have no evidence of Jesus appearing in the text that we read today. But Peter testifies that Jesus, his victory over death, is a victory that brings the love of God into every life. Up until that time, for the Jewish people, <sighs> did you hear me say I like having kids in church? <laughs> Hi, Connor. Jesus was not there. Jesus was risen. What we can take from this story is that Jesus, in his spiritual reality, has overcome death. And so we no longer need to be afraid of any form of adversity. Anything that challenges us, we don't have to be afraid of it. We have to deal with it. But we deal with it through faith. Because we know that in the same way that Jesus' spirit was separated from his body, in the same way that his spirit was raised up into newness of life, so we will be raised up into newness of life in our day. I call the talk Bread from Heaven. And that's because we are going to participate in this table's goods and in these elements, what we have is a symbolic representation of God's presence with us here. So you are all invited to come forward and to participate in the love of God, which is freely given. Nothing is held against you. All you have to do is choose the way of life. Go forward confidently. Go forward as a witness to God's love in and through all of your relations.